Hey everyone, Len here. Uh, yesterday I found some um, steel bars that I had from oh, a year ago. Um, they were joined together. I found them at a tip down at Fernvale, which is in Queensland. This is this is them here. It's a bit sunny today, so I've got these ones. They're 19 mil round. So I've got two of them. There's the other one there. They were bent and welded together for something. So anyway, I thought, well, these will make good tongs. So I cut a couple of bits off. So I've got two bits ready to make a pair of tongs. Now I had a bit left over and I thought, I'm going to... I want to do some practice. I like I watch a lot of Brian's Brazil's uh, videos. I think Brian's a top, excellent master black suit. And I've been watching this one on him making tongs. I've must have watched them twenty, if not more, times. And what Brian does is well he he's got one big length because he's making tongs without tongs. So he's got one big length, so he's got about 16. These are 8 inches, so he's got probably that much length, 16 inches. I've cut them at 8 inches. Brian will forge down the, the bit of the tong. Then you'll do the second one. Then you'll do the third set down, like we've talked about before. And then, I love the way he draws out the reins. What I did yesterday, I, I did it a bit reversed. Uh, the bit I had yesterday was a bit smaller. Where am I? I'm a shocking video person, aren't I? Anyway, I just uh, wanted to try the, the uh, drawing out. So I did it the way Brian does. Heat it up, turn it. You're drawing it out, bringing it up towards you on the offside, the angle, turning it. So he sort of does it in a square thing. Then he comes to this side, the near side. Then he pushes it on and half, half, half hit blows, half on, half off blows. Anyway, when I was watching this, when Brian did the second part of the tongs, he mentioned this area which I'm really always interested in. I did a video on this. The second set down. Sorry, this one. The second set down. Brian talks about this in the second lot. He left it out the first lot because he didn't want to um, confuse people. I just did a tom blank. Yes, I don't know what I'm going to do with these. I'm just doing blanks in case I want extra tongs. Anyway, what I want to say I asked Brian, he's in Africa at the moment, so, but he answers questions all the time, he's a good bloke. I asked him about this part, and he said, yes, what you do is, um, you bring it on, when you've done your first set down, 90 degrees, because I'm right-handed, over to here, and let me get rid of these two round bit, over to there. And what he was saying <clears throat> in the second bit, he turned it and he hit. This is hard because I'm holding a video camera. Now, let me hold it between my legs. When he came in here, he hit here, which drives this bit down. You with me? So when he's doing this second set down, 45 degree angle, but then he brings it around and then you hit here. That drives that back. You with me, guys? That drives this back. See how it's nearly opposite the first set down? There's the first set down. Second set down. So it drives this area back, like I was saying in my video. Drives it back, 
And what I like about Brian is when when he's doing it, he and I did it a bit yesterday. When you do that one, second one, third one, and then when you've got this part done for the head of your your tongue, he will then come here and do another set down so that he brings the taper down for this area. He'll bring it down so it starts to even out. And that's what I was practicing yesterday. Evening out the tapers. As Brian says, you have a bar, then you've got this taper, and you've got another bit of a taper going this way too. But this area here seems to be the problem I, and I think a lot of others, have problems with having this flat. If this is not flat, your tongs will not articulate. So, these could be a little bit, if I look at it from down here, you want that area nice and flat along there. Same as the other tongs, so that they articulate properly. These are those second ones I made, flat jaw. I think I showed you these. And I concentrated on the same thing with the jaws. See how I've got up in here? Just let me put it down for a sec. See here? See how I've got plenty of space for the jaws to articulate? This is what Brian was on about. When you hit, when you're there and you hit back on that second part and then you hit, hit there, you drive the, you're driving this part back, right? Of that part back, which is that that part there for that part for that tongue. See that? So this, when you're driving that back, on the anvil. <coughs> pardon me. <coughs> had a bad cough <coughs> for weeks now. Um, you're driving that back, which in your tongs gives you that nice distance. I hope this helps guys, I, if I can, I don't know much, but when I do work something out, I want to share it and help people, lots of people have helped me and <clears throat> that's what I love about the blacksmith community, it's all about help. So, just wanted to share that, so I was just mucking around yesterday, uh, I don't know about today, we've got drought here in Queensland, I don't know if I really should start the forger. Uh, even though it's a contained fire. Anyway, uh, when I can, I'll be working on drawing out. Uh, just practice. I love practicing. I want to be better. Um, the other day, guys, just for practice, I did these. Where are they? Oh, there's, my, there's my little uh, scrolling tongs I did the other day. I've used them a couple of times, they're pretty good. There's that wrench of mine. Not wrench, adjusting spanner that I got at the market. I love this one. Anyway, just for fun, had a bit of scrap. Did some S hooks because I wanted to get it symmetrical. Practice, practice, practice. No matter what you're doing, football, martial arts, drawing, painting welding, uh, working on cars, whatever you do, um, it's practice, practice. So I did some mess hooks, that little one and this bigger one, <coughs> trying to get it symmetrical. Wasn't very good on them and I'm probably still not much good, but that's not bad. So I just like getting on the anvil, practicing. 
practicing, practicing. Get that metal hot. I was really happy the way these turned out. I've always had trouble getting my reins down small enough. But using Brian's method, and you have to be careful when you get to this, down this low, not to be aggressive on the edge of the anvil with the rounding part of your hammer, because you can really mess it up. I nearly did yesterday. But uh, that, that, that drew out quite good. I'm quite happy with that. So there you go, guys. Uh, hope that helps. And gives people a bit of inspiration. Get back into your work, into your shop, and heat some metal up. And I mean, I, I just, as you know, I love making tongs. This was a muck around yesterday, but I'll keep that as a blank. And then when uh, today, if I feel like it, I might get it to them. These two bits around that I've got, and um, make some more tongue blanks. I'll make the nibs big enough so I can make flat, flat nib tongs, or whether I want to do um, some rounded jaw tongs for holding round stock like these. I don't know yet. These, these have been invaluable, these ones. These work really well. So I might make some more like that. I don't know, if I keep going, I'm not going to have any room to put my tongs. I'm going to have to make another stand. Or stack them up over there or something, I don't know. Anyway, guys, a uh, beautiful day here in Queensland. That's out the side of the yard where we went on that fence. My old uh, bandanas hanging up there. Got to wear them for the sweat. They hang up there and dry out. Used them. Um, it's supposed to be cooler today, 23 or something. A lot of wind. That's why there's total fire bands on. Oh, before I forget, for you Aussie guys, um, I think I showed you some gloves a while ago I got when I got the nice hammer from Paul Pitto. Anyway, I was, I was having a look on the Australian Amazon site and I saw these gloves. They're like an oven glove. Ten bucks. Ten bucks. So I've been using them, as you can see. Uh, they just come in the one sort of left-handed thing. So I got two. Uh, I wanted to test them out compared to the gloves I got from America which are those ones and th these are really good when you work with hot metal they've had a lot of use you can look at that John Swatcher uses these ones from Black Bear Ford but these these are probably a bit thicker I don't know these have got a lining in them but I tell you what I had my hand up near the front of the forge yesterday accidentally here and the, the heat's coming out here, unbelievable. I got the little forge gunner and going really well now. I have my hand up here and you know, working on that bit of tongue that I was like, and yeah, I could feel the heat, but my hand wasn't burnt. So, guys, um, if you're looking for some gloves that for heat protection, uh, these are called. Work protection, heat resistant, gear series, G and F something. Gee, I can't read that. Anyway, they, they, they're under the made in China. Anyway, 10 bucks. Um, so if you're looking for something for your left hand, for your tong hand,